So today I'd like to start off with an knowledge of country. Um, I begin today by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today and pay respects to the elders past, present, and emerging. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today. Today we have Isabella Pepper Clark, a registered architect in Victoria. She runs the sustainability advocacy and carbon Surrey calculation business, Susty Spec. Isabella is specialized in education, spec, um, education sector architect and has run projects through to site for around $10 million. She has implemented sustainability in practice and on projects. Graduating from a Master of Architecture in 2018 from Wanash University, she has returned to teach architectural performance. She is passionate about educating students on embodied carbon. Isabel has led to the development of Product Aware, an online database providing a platform for product transparency. Two years in the making, Isabella, Isabella has organized industry collaborators from Cox, BVN, and Base Smart to contribute to building the platform. <clears throat> the site went live in early 2024 and has since had 1,200 plus users. In mid-2024, the Product Aware team launched the site in person in Melbourne, Sydney, and Brisbane. Isabel has since included firms such as Architectus to assist on onboarding forward, moving forward. Uh, before we get into it, I'd just like to ask that participants leave their microphones off and to save any questions for Isabel until after the presentation. Thank you. Isabel, over to you. Thanks heaps, Liam. Um, yeah, thanks for inviting me to Sona and Imagine. Um, it's great to be here. I used to be on the Imagine committee in Victoria. So yeah, um, it's nice to see everyone here today. And uh, yeah, please save some questions for the end. Um, we'll put them in the chat or however it goes. Um, and I'll try and keep it punchy to about 20 minutes or under so that we can get into um, the discussion. Don't be shy. I'm just going to share my screen. Um, cool. So hopefully everyone can see that right now. Um, so I'll probably talk about 10 minutes about some background of Product Aware. You may or may not have heard of it. It might be why you've attended today, but maybe you've just come to the sustainability snacks, great sessions and um and starting out. So uh, I will go into detail a little bit as much as I can, but then I'll also leave 10 minutes at the end just to show you the, the outcome of the site so that you can actually see that for yourself and go and try it after today's session. So what is Product Aware? Um, essentially how it came about in the early days um, was just an idea. It was a pretty... Um, it, like concept in its infancy but uh, this is just a, a teaser of what it kind of looks like now and um, you can see the first slide with what the landing page when you log into the database is um, so this all started back in 2022 two years ago um, actually when I started Susty Spec um, which was an online advocacy tool and sort of educational pro bono resource um, on Instagram as a platform. And that just was basically my intention of like dispelling a lot of the greenwash and um, I suppose misinformation in the industry and um, that I was seeing a lot at university when teaching students and also just in practice with just really all of the professionals at any level of architects um, and also consultants and clients, for example, people misunderstanding sustainability and uh, a lot of like material basics. Um, so if you don't know much about embodied carbon, typically you might've heard of like operational carbon and ways to address this could be like solar panels, for example. So embodied carbon is sort of the other side of that where we're talking about materials and the sort of could be carbon, energy, water actually embodied in that process of manufacturing the material. It's actually from the source um, of the material extraction or um, creation through to the on-site, um, you know, delivery and construction and then through to that um, end of life. So we can talk about it in different chunks, which I won't go into today actually because there's not enough time, but um, I would employee to look into it if you don't know about it and you can check out at susty spec on instagram for some quick tips so embodied carbon actually um, is currently sitting around 22 percent of australian building emissions and operational carbon is the rest but um, by 2050 there's actually been a report released about you know embodied carbon 
overtaking the uh, the percentage of emissions it contributes to make up 85% in 2050. So obviously this is like kind of a, a big chunk of our careers um, that is going to be the forefront of our minds when we're thinking about materials and product selection. So my preface is this, that greenwash is over or should be. Um, we should be educated enough right now uh, through studies and um, practice to be able to mitigate um, having uh, buildings with negative environmental costs. Um, but we are not, we're nowhere near here and we're nowhere near where we need to be on the trajectory of stamping this out. So um, our journey in terms of the product aware team and the collaboration in industry um, was at the inception of the materials working group, um, which was a group that I initiated in Architects de Claire. Um, this allowed me to sort of pitch the, the idea of a database um, and also working backwards and sort of challenging that idea and questioning whether that was the best course of action um, and also allowed me to sort of find interested participants in putting together a team to workshop through this idea. Um, so I'll go through that a little bit now, um, but I'll just quickly go over the team. So it hasn't just been me working on this, obviously. Um, I've been managing the team and coordinating it um, since the start, uh, very early days of the team being put together. They've been working with Lucy from Bait Smart and Valerie from BVN. All these, they're, they're from Sydney, so if you know them. Um, and then Adrian from BVN as well as a few other people. And then last year, um, Cox came on board. So David from Melbourne, Matthias and Stefan from Sydney. So that is the team that we've been working on various parts. I've kind of been overseeing it and the others have been responsible for, you know, looking into research and development or developing the site. Um, so what are the barriers to sustainable specification? Now, you may have experienced this firsthand or you may have heard about this verbatim, um, but I would argue that maybe you've had a go at this at uni or just with who I'm talking to at the moment in the audience. Um, you've had a go at uni doing this at uni and you may have found some difficulties finding, working your way through it, but you may have been able to have a bit of control over it, right? Because it's your own uni project or whatever. It's a bit easier. It doesn't actually have to get built. You don't have all the politics of a firm. You don't have all the issues with the builder. You don't have design and construct. You don't have client um, blocking you or something, right? So it's a bit easier in theory, but it's difficult in practice. Um, and so what are the barriers to sustainable specification is, um, some are that it's too hard to find the information, right? Because we need specific technical information. We can't be saying, oh, I'm just going to, you know, create this factory that manufactures rammed earth bricks and then I'm going to use drones to transport it to site. Like this isn't realistic, unfortunately, <laughs> yet. Um, and so we can't all be ando and we can't all just make up our own delivery strategies or, you know, clients or builders. Um, so we need to find products that are out there and it's hard to find information about real products that are being manufactured and there's been a lot of R&D that have gone into those supply chains, right, and it's hard to unpack that. Um, it's also hard to find real factual data like what is um, true and what it has a bit of marketing spin on it or what may not be accurate data, where is this data coming from it's kind of almost like data science really which we're not used to doing as architects what do certifications mean so um you know again marketing has contributed a lot to the spin on different certification schemes like green star for example but if anyone's done a green star project i haven't actually done one myself but i have reviewed it and i've done the certification um, or it could be any of the certifications, passive house, um, for example, would be, you know, talking about operational 
Um, and so if you look at materials or embodied carbon, just because you have some sort of certification, it doesn't actually mean that um, this has been covered. This area has been covered. It could mean that this credit or this, this points were ignored. And actually something else was really great about, about the building, but how is that communicated to the design team or the public? Then you've got greenwash. Obviously, a lot of the time, there's not people aren't even aware of it. Maybe sometimes that they're doing it, they don't mean to be greenwashing, but sometimes they can give misinformation. Um, a lot of the information and, and data we need is fragmented, and we're also time poor in practice, right? Now, hopefully, no one's doing overtime, but um, you know, this is kind of the commonality of the construction industry. There's a lot of time pressures, and we just don't have um, the resources to look into this. What are the solutions? Um, what are the right questions to ask, right? We need to know what questions are reasonable to ask suppliers about their materials and products. Um, what are the priorities for maybe this is our practice, our project, us as individuals? Um, who are the experts that we need to be liaising and collaborating with in industry to get the right um, answers and questions? And will people will use something if we make it for them this is a general question about any resource but um, in terms of building um, the site as we did we really need to consider this so this isn't really the solutions right but the solution could be a database and so we looked into this idea further and how we could actually make this um oh, excuse so in terms of times and costs, um, so this is a little bit outdated, but we had around six people working on it, probably four to six um, throughout the two-year period. Um, there was, I spent around 1,200 hours on it pro bono outside of work unpaid. So it's, yeah, at night, weekends, what have you, during lunch, um, before work. <laughs> And yeah, so it's come up to 12 years, uh, sorry, two years now. So 18 months for the R&D and build. And then it's been about six months since the launch now, which is exciting. As Liam said before, I've got over 1,200 users now, which is great. Um, so in terms of formulating the database, I'm just going to check the time. Oh, my God, I'm running out of time. <laughs> um so these are the different buckets that were partially influenced by um, Mindful Materials, which is a um, American database. Um, and so we just wanted to tailor this to the Australian market and tailor all the questions to the Australian supply chains. Um, so, and I'll, I'll go into this on the next slides, but you can also just check out the database yourself and you'll see all the same categories. Um, so the R&D period was around 12 months and the build was around six months. Um, so we asked GBCA, Green Tag, LFIA, Declare, um, AIA, Neighbours and others. We also liaised with individual suppliers, large ones and some small ones, um, some more sustainable products-based suppliers, but also just really normal suppliers like the big, big companies that, um, you know, a, a sort of that um, extraction process. And then we asked specifiers and designers. Um, we rewrote and rewrote the questions and designed the user interface as well. Um, so Kate from BKK did that. So this is what it's looking like at the moment, which is fantastic. So you've got all the tiles um, for each product um, and then you can do advanced search functions, but I'll go into that a little bit later. So as an example, um, yeah, you've got the database and then you um, click on one of the entries and to view a product. And you can see um, this is Dura Panel, which is a great, seemingly a great product. So it's manufactured in Bendigo um, in Victoria. So it would be good for me if I'm doing a product, uh, doing projects in Victoria um, and you can see we asked some product company details um, we also provide a completeness check against how much information a supplier has filled out about the product and we ask a lot of general information that you would want to use for like your material schedules um, 
so yeah we also asked primary source uh, material locations, manufacturing locations, storing warehousing location. And you've also got links. All this in orange is a link. Yeah, you know? so you've got links to compliance documents and certifications. Um, we ask about VOCs and all about life cycle assessments. These are all technical things that is good to self like, educate yourself on. If you don't know any of these, um, waste minimization. And so this is really helpful for design just so that you can um, better understand how you should actually be designing, for example, to panel or sheet sizes, considering offcuts and waste. All of this is pretty advanced as well. Like it's a lot to take in if you're a student or a grad, but I think just giving it a go and getting it early and then you'll, you'll get better at it over time. Um, social responsibility, equity, and human rights are really important. Modern slavery, for example, and trying to um, eradicate that. And then we've also got advanced filters. Um, so you can filter by, like, you can sort the entries by, like, lowest carbon. Well, there's um, other options here. Um, so that's how they display on the database for you then. Um, you can search all the product categories as well. Um, you can search a uh, manufacturer. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and you can set your site location. So like. Sorry. Can... Yeah. Sorry. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, you can set Melbourne um, and you can set your, or would, whichever city you're in. And then you can set how many kilometers from site that you want to be the maximum uh, product uh, maximum distance that a product would then be displayed in the search. If that makes sense. Um, and you can filter by your priorities. So whether they've declared how much embodied carbon is in the product or water, if they've got a modern slavery policy or plan, and if it's low toxicity. So you can add as many filters as you want and it will filter out products that don't align to that. And you can um, select as many compliance um, documents as you want here and um, also if you don't know these compliance requirements because yeah it does take a while to learn about these if you're a student or a grad you, you can also use this list just to like look into research these because then you'll eventually need to know all of those um, and then certifications these are various environmental certifications as well if you're on a green staff for example project you would need to um, select the, the requirements with that minimum. Um, yeah, we've got really good feedback from everyone. Um, so the launches were complete this year and we're onboarding specifiers and suppliers. So hopefully you'll jump on and use this in your firms. Um, and then hopefully there'll be some extra, we've got a few upgrades in the works. Hopefully there'll be some more and then we'll be maintained ongoing. But yeah, it's free to use, free to sign up and free to use ongoing. So thank you very much. Amazing. Thank you so much, Isabel. That was really, really insightful. And I think really cool to see, again, an aspect of the industry that's, you know, has been ignored for the longest time, I'd argue. And it's nice to be able to have something nice and concise all kind of come together in this really, really awesome package. Um, I did have a few questions um, from myself. Um, and if anyone has any questions that they want to, you know, submit, just throw it in the chat and we're happy to, we're happy to uh, panel those out to, uh, to Isabella. But I'll start off the conversation here. Um, since beginning product aware, have you noticed significant impacts uh, to how practices consider their suppliers? Yep. I think definitely, thanks for the question, um, like my feedback that I've got from firms, I've been going to present to firms multiple um, times this year, as well as the launches. So I've probably been speaking to, you know, 50 or so designers about recently about how they're looking to incorporate this into their workflows. Um, and so, and what their current practice is as well. And their current practice, I think in the main, unless they have specific uh, like sustainability knowledge, which you definitely don't need to talk to a supplier about this. Like you can have a general architecture knowledge and still talk to a supplier about this stuff. You don't need to have any special training, um, but 
there, I think a lot of people, they didn't know what basic questions to ask and they actually didn't understand like these questions that we display on product aware. Um, so it's been really useful for people because they can just look at the questions that are in the questionnaire and they know that their best practice, like for Australia, they know that people have looked at them um, and researched them in depth. And so they can just use that as a benchmark instead of reinventing it. So that's been really like a helpful thing for everyone, I think, is what I've heard, which is great because that was the intention. Um, and yeah, and then you can really just work, you know, and spend, instead of spending time on that, people can just then work now with suppliers coming from that benchmark level. So they're going to send the product aware uh, link to a supplier and say, look, can you upload your products? It's free. Um, it's free for suppliers, free for designers. And then the supplier just inputs all their data and then the designer just has to look at the uh, the data and do their due diligence. But at least they don't have to invent all the questions and have a like difficult conversation where they don't know what they should be asking. Mm, absolutely. I mean, like you said earlier in your presentation, it's so tough to be able to go to each individual supplier. And like it takes a lot of time and a lot of energy. And, you know, being able to have it all in one place and have it be concise is really, really important. So I think in that sense, I feel like this is a really fantastic uh uh, products, <laughs> you know, jokes aside, um, for students as well. So, you know, how do you think then can students and grads, you know, use product aware to, you know, and implement that into the workflow in terms of its database? Yeah, hundred percent. Um, I think with students, probably it would be quite useful, um, even to use at uni. I think, um, if you need to do, which is always good to just see what products are out there, or like you're interested in a specific product, it would actually enable you to find out potentially more about more than you used to be able to. Um, sometimes it shows a lot more detailed information than maybe what suppliers have on their website. So if you're looking at using a new product, you can do some research through product aware. Um, at work, if you're a student working in a firm or a graduate, then um, implementing into your daily workflow, you don't really need permission from your boss. Like you can just take this upon yourself. It's quite, it makes it quite quick for you to do some research. So I think it's like quite an empowering thing um, to, to actually have this resource or tool free because you, you don't need a company account. You don't need to pay for it. You can just go on and make your own personal account and just suggest to like whoever you're working under, oh, actually this material is actually more sustainable. Can we just check it out, do some due diligence, make sure it's right. And um, you can actually offer and propose suggestions that are more sustainable for your project instead of, um, yeah, waiting uh, for permission to do research or um, yeah, being just time poor or always leaving it to say like your seniors at work um, to either, you know, bring sustainability um, thinking onto the project or not, you can actually take that proactive approach now. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Um, Karen uh, from uh, Curtin University um, has uh, asked a question here in the chat. Um, are there any kinds of suppliers uh, that still need to be added? So um, thanks for the question, Karen. So yeah, there's plenty that still need to be added. I think we have we have hundreds of products uploaded at the moment with more suppliers being spoken to about uploading more. Um, and it really is a working database. Like it's a work in progress. Like it keeps being added to every week um, from an interior background. Yeah, so a lot of products are that have been added are interiors focused and there's quite a bit of safe furniture as well and the like. But um, yeah, definitely the best thing to do is just when you're working on something like a project and you want to use a certain product, then just checking if it's on product aware already. And if it's not and you can't get the data, then just email that supplier and say, can you please upload all your data for me? Um, onto product aware and then you can review that and that's the best way that we get people uploading um, day to day but then we can also get like bulk uploads as well which mm. is good and we have a two-prong question here from Denton um, hi Isabella thanks for the presentation a couple of great questions um, is there a process to ensure all information and provided by suppliers is up to date and is there a process for advocacy to suppliers who don't participate slash have certificates Cool. Thanks, DCM people. Um, so, yeah, essentially provided by suppliers up to date, there is a um, date stamp record 
on the product sheet so you can see when it was last updated. So if, it, if it's not up to date and you notice that maybe a supplier has forgotten to check, then you can um, just reach out to them and say, is this all correct? Can you please review your entry? That's the best way to do it at the moment. We're looking into like automating that, um, some reminders or liaising with the suppliers to check that themselves. And then secondly, is there a process for advocacy? Then, yeah, basically what I was saying to Karen's question before, um, yeah, there is a template um, as well, which I can probably share with Sona and imagine just like an email template that you can send out. It's a bit easier than writing your own um, to try and get supplies to upload themselves. So they're going to fill out the um, form on the website and enter all their details for you and then send you the the link once they're done. So, yeah, and we haven't actually had anyone say no in terms of a supplier. Everyone's been happy to upload to it. So, um, yeah, everyone can see the commercial benefits. So please feel free to refer people to us at info at productaware.com.au if um, you get a supplier saying they don't want to or something. We can have, like, a further chat with them or something, but it hasn't happened yet. Mm. And uh, one final question from Tuan. Thank you, Tuan. Great question. How do we know the product information uh, put up by a supplier is not greenwashed or misleading without independent verification? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's a good point. And so obviously it the supplier does sign a disclaimer when they submit their information that they're like legally accountable to what they've um, provided, the information they've provided. Um, but you still need to do your due diligence. So it's essentially no, like it, it's actually a better system in terms of the empowerment or the resource that you get from using the tool than, for example, the current situation where people have their own independent website and they're uploading marketing spin and statements um, that aren't independently verified either. And they're actually also um, like providing certification to our in response to our independent written questions as well so it's kind of removing that uncertainty from just going onto a bunch of websites and getting all different types of formats and information from them mm, absolutely um we are running out of time so karen sorry about uh you know missing your question um if you, any of you did have any extra um, questions for isabella she's um reach outable um you can definitely just reach out i'm sure um mm -hmm. you know and to answer any extra questions but to kind of just finish off um Isabella, what got you interested in the sustainability space and what gets you excited about where the sustainability space is going? Um, thanks, Liam. I think that essentially what got me excited about it was actually at uni back in first year, um, and that was in 2014, um, so a while ago, 10 years ago, um, and that was all about, um, you know, how can we actually use our position as designers for better impact, positive impacts in general, in society, in the environment. And this is a way that we can achieve that goal. So I think that's very rewarding. And um, to your second point, uh, what, what gets me excited is the industry collaboration, bringing everyone's education level up to a high level so that everyone feels empowered independently to make these choices as designers. And you can actually have a really large impact through your job, more so than you as an individual outside work. But in terms of the construction industry, it's a huge emitter of carbon. And as designers actually selecting these products, making the decisions about how we design buildings, we can have a huge impact in um, the recovery of the environment. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Isabella, for presenting today. It was really insightful and really, really fantastic to be able to hear about um, your side of the industry, um, specifically within the sustainability space, obviously sustainability snacks. But um, Thank you everyone else for joining in. Um, really appreciate everyone's input and all the fantastic questions we had today. Um, look out for the next sustainability snacks. Um, just watch the space and uh, we'll be happy to have you guys again next time. Thank you. Thanks so much. Have a good day.